Welcome to another episode of Track It. Today I'm going to be working in the garage and showing you how to make a radio on the cheap. Hopefully these are bits and pieces that you've got laying around in a drawer or some box in the loft somewhere, but if you haven't, you should be able to get these on eBay for maybe 10 or 15 pounds at the most. I'm going to show you the bits and pieces you need, like a radio, how to assemble it, and then at the end it should all be working very nicely. I've done this before and it has proved very successful, but now I've got a new workbench, um, I'd like to do a slightly more permanent install for the radio. So let's have a look at what we've got on the bench and put it all together. These are the bits you're gonna to need to complete the job. Some standard stuff when you're working on a car for doing electric, so heat shrink, electrical tape, um, soldering iron, and a hair dryer for making the heat shrink shrink. This one's optional, but um, is always nice to have. I've got a car aerial. Um, this is from a car, but you can get others which just go in the back and are quite a bit smaller than this. This one's got an amplifier, so if I wanted to plug that in, then I can just um, connect this, and I can connect this, and it, then I should be able to get a better signal. I've got some wire strippers, um, a power supply unit from a computer. This one is a slightly bigger one from obviously a beast of a machine. This one is from an older computer, um, but small and probably pretty good for this job. I've got a radio. This came in a car that I bought. I uh, have absolutely no need for it, and hence why this is a very cheap thing to do. Uh, I think it's a relatively okay one or should produce good sound. And if you want to do a nice clean install, then I've got um, a box here, which is uh, it's actually a Land Rover under dash box, but it's a, a universal um, radio compartment. Then I've got the ISO connectors. Again, I've cut these from a Clio, being a Clio nut. But these are just standardized um, ISO connectors. The only thing that might change between them are the uh, 12 volts constant, uh, which is the red one, and the um, ignition control 12 volts live, which is this yellow one. Then you need some speakers, and maybe if you're doing a long run for the speakers, you might need some additional um, speaker cable as well. So without further ado, let's chop these wires up and get some 12 volts going to that. This is a relatively small power supply unit, um, but should be ample for powering a radio. This is what it will look like when you take it out of a computer, so it will have lots of different connections on it, but we can really shrink this um, mess down. My one has got a standard 20-pin uh, ATX connector, and if you look up an ATX connector, you'll be able to see the pinout on it. But there are just a few um, key things that you need to know about this. So the black wires are ground, as you would expect on a car, and the yellow wires are 12 volts. Power supply units can also do 3.3 volts and 5 volts as well, so um, just make sure that you're only using the uh, yellow wires or check your specific power supply unit as they can vary, but the colours should be standardised. To get the power supply unit working, you should see a green wire like this, and to turn the power supply unit on, you'll need to cut the green wire and solder it to a black wire and then the power supply unit should come on. If it doesn't come on immediately then don't worry because power supply units often have to be loaded to actually turn on and if there's no load attached to them then they just simply won't work. By plugging the radio into this then you will be able to load the power supply unit as such so once you've actually done all of the wiring and you plug it into your radio then it should turn on if it didn't in the first place. If it turns on just by connecting the green to an earth then um, you know you, it's uh, it's working much earlier on in the process. So I'm going to tidy this wire this wiring up. I'm going to take all of the yellows out. I'm going to cut down the reds very short and every other wire that I don't need and then I'm going to solder them to the ISO connectors. I've cut off all of the plugs you can see I've got just got an enormous bundle of wires there are only a few that I need from this so I should end up with just three colors I need to keep the green the blacks and the yellows the rest of these can be cut off now if you want to test other 
um, automotive electronics, then a lot of them run on 3.3 volts or 5 volts. So you might want to keep the um, the reds and whatever is 3.3 um, .3 volts. I can't remember. I think it's uh, maybe purple. Um, so you might want to keep those. But this for me is just going to be purely for the radio. So I'm going to chop off anything that's not the colour I want and then start soldering the rest of the um, plugs on that I need. I've created this small loop with the green and the black wire. So you can see that there, hopefully. This just replicates the switch on your PC. So when you turn your PC on, you press the button. All you're doing is you're connecting the, um, the green wire, which goes to the switch, to the ground. So we're just replicating that there. I'm going to solder this together and then put um, a little bit of heat shrink over it. Now I've connected the green and the earth together I can move on to the power and the earth of the radio I've got the 12 volts here and the earth so I've cut them all to the same length they are um, a longer length than I realistically need but um, I'm not quite sure how long I need them at this point then I'm going to strip the ends of these I'm going to bundle them together and connect them to the 12 volt supply for the radio on your radio you've probably got a red and a yellow these are the 12 volt supplies with the yellow from a Renault anyway, being the ignition controlled live and the red being the constant 12 volts from the battery. Now, I'm not gonna have a constant 12 volts here, which normally assists with keeping the memory in the radio and I don't need it because the radio I've got has got a memory in it, so it will always remember the radio stations. However, if you are looking to use, a, um, use the memory function and your radio doesn't have memory, then I'm pretty sure, although I haven't confirmed, that the, um, purple cable in the power supply unit is a five volt constant supply and then you would need to use a mosfet um, transistor to step that up to 12 volts and um, hopefully then you'd be able to have your memory function you have of course got the earth on the iso connector let's wait for that to focus and then these otherwise you don't need them but um, for the purposes of explaining what they are the light blue one is for dashboard illumination so it actually dims the radio when you turn the side lights on and this purple wire is for um, changing the brightness of the radio once it's actually illuminated and um, the gray wire i can't remember what that is so i'm going to bundle these wires um, solder them together and then i'm going to plug the radio in and we should be able to test at that point whether the radio is working with this power supply unit Now I've done this one, we just need to do exactly the same for the ground. That is most definitely not a beautiful solder. Right, we're now at the point that we can test the radio. So I'm gonna plug the ISO connector into the back here which goes into that one and then I've already got the power supply unit plugged in but um, I just haven't got the uh, switch turned on so if this turns on you should be able to see the fan spinning if the um, black and green didn't work initially when you tried it the fan probably didn't spin but hopefully now it's got a load on it which is the radio this should work ah what an There we are. So we can now get the radio on. Pretty happy with that. It seems to work. And as I say, this one has actually got memory in it. So radio one, radio two, three, four, something else and absolute. So the last thing we need to do with this then is to wire up the speakers. This is the ISO connector and each of these wires is um, either a positive or a negative for the speakers. So 
you've got the top two which are for rear speakers and the bottom two which are for rear speakers and then you've got um, these center ones which are the fronts now i think you probably want to use the fronts just because the um, radio may be front biasing um, but you can also wire in the rears if you want for the purposes of what i'm doing i'm only going to be using the fronts and um, it goes uh, one two three four five six seven eight so the b3 i think just having a look at my phone this is the uh, right front positive and this is the right front negative then we've got the left front positive and the left front negative all you need to do is match those up with your wires on your speakers um, however you run your speakers they may have or be like these wires which have a um, coloured line on them or a red on this one to indicate that that is the negative lead. Just make sure that you get the polarity right, otherwise the sound might be um, a little bit odd. So I'm just going to wire up the speakers now and then we'll be able to test the radio out. got the final install done and I thought I wouldn't record this bit because it's probably going to be slightly different depending on how you plan on doing it but um, I've put the aerial in here and it actually runs up and goes on to the top there to get it as high as possible and I've mounted these speakers in this corner and this corner over here all the plugs go into the back and I've cable tied the um, very small power supply unit to the bottom of the radio um, the radio kind of cubby hole so all I need to do is switch it on. And as you can see, it kind of boots up and then the on button is up there. And this is a bit easier for me to see because I've got a microphone on top. It's uh, of course quite difficult for me to get the camera up there. But anyway, it tunes absolutely fine and um, I won't put any music on because I'll probably get dinged by YouTube. But the radio tunes in and I've now got a fully working garage radio. That's it then. Hopefully that was a relatively useful tutorial and I know it wasn't track car related but it might be something you want to get in your garage. Um, it's certainly good for me because I spend a lot of time in here and it's nice to have some music playing in the background. Just um, a note about the channel, I know we've been really quiet lately, um, it's not through choice, um, it's purely a time thing and we have been working on cars, um, we've actually been doing a turbo conversion on a 182 uh, which we did start filming but we've kind of had to stop filming it because we've been very very tight for time. We started that project in January, um, it's now August and the car is still not finished so I have got some footage from that um, which I will be releasing but it won't be like a step by step. That said, um, there is a car right there, which is a new shell for a track car. And I'm gonna be taking my old cup apart and putting all of the bits and pieces onto this one. In the process of doing that, I'm gonna be doing um, an engine build as well, which is just gonna be a standard engine, um, but I'm gonna be putting it all together in here. And um, I'm also gonna be turbo converting it at the same time. So that should be a relatively interesting one. Um, if you enjoyed this video then please give it a like um, and if you consider subscribing um, that would be really good as well. Hopefully I will see you in a video very soon.